And welcome to another episode of True You Ministries. Hopefully you're having a blessed morning so far. Stacy, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing great today, Todd. How are you? I'm always good. And even 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 better that we've got a guest today. We've got yeah. a guest, Holly Soto. How are you doing, Holly? I'm doing great. Thank you. Excited to be here. Well, it's going to be a great show today. Today's topic is keys to good physical, emotional health. We I mean, That's a big topic to cover. So it's going to, we got a lot of info to jam in here. But before we go any further, I want to give a little brief background about Holly. Holly is a faith-based certified holistic nutritionist, nutritionist, personal trainer, and group fitness instructor, and has been in fitness and health industry for almost 20 years. It was her own weight loss and body transformation that created her passion to help other women change their bodies, build strength, gain confidence, and renew their lives by combining faith with overall wellness. She lives in Los Angeles County with her husband, where they complete they can c- compete in triathlons and running races in their free time. Well, you're a busy person, Holly. <laughs> I am pretty busy, yeah. <laughs> Well, Stacy, I know we start all of the shows with a little bit of personal background of, with this topic. Mm-hmm. Can you share some of your personal story of um, dealing with good physical and emotional health? Yes. So for 30 plus years, I've been dealing with chronic fatigue and insomnia. And I tried everything that was out there to help with both. And I have to tell you, it has been quite the journey. It, it it really impacted me emotionally and in my own well-being in being able to continue being present and active in my life and even wanting to participate in life. It's been a constant struggle where, you know, you go to the people that should know and you tell them, you know, how you're feeling, what's going on. And they give you a remedy that doesn't really work. And so through those experiences, I've never really felt that I was heard or listened to. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that the Lord has created our bodies to heal itself. Mm. And I wanted to find a way to be able to do that without going the traditional route that most people go through go through because that has not ever worked for me. So because of the work that I do as a counselor, I help people get to their root issues of the emotional pain that they're experiencing. So with the physical ailments that I've been struggling with, I wanted to get to the root issues rather than putting a Band-Aid on it because it would just get worse. And so there were times when I felt really depressed. I felt Uh, somewhat hopeless in life, like what's the point? Mm. And so it really impacted my emotional health. It even impacted me spiritually because I would get so angry with God and say to him, you know, I've been praying for so long for healing. Why aren't you doing anything? And, you know, that, that's what I'd struggled with for so, for so long. And, and I don't want others to be struggling like that either, which is why I wanted Holly to, to join us today because of some insights that she has some practical things that she can also share with people that may help unlock some things for them. Well, and it really is, you know, something that you got to work on the wholeness of it all, you know, mind, body, and soul. If, yeah. like you said, if you're tired, sluggish, if you're not, don't have energy, you can't be living to your full p- potential and you may not be, you know, your faith may dwindle a little bit because you're just not feeling like yourself, brain fog, dealing with all that issues that mm-hmm. come along with fatigue. Um, right. And so can you tell us a little bit about how in your practice you use some of God's wisdom and some scripture when it comes to uh, d- dealing with uh, patients that have this uh, fatigue? Well, I, I, because this is not my area of expertise with regard to the physical, and I certainly want Holly to, to speak into that, is um, I tell them that our mind, body, and spirit are all connected. So if there's one area that is out of balance or there's one area that is struggling, it absolutely impacts the other areas. And so I tell them not to give up 
that there is an answer and to continue praying to the Lord. I love, I love this scripture, Jeremiah 30, 17, where the Lord says, for I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. And that's a promise. Yeah. Now he may not do it instantly, but he does lead us to the right practitioner that can help us find an answer to what is ailing us. And this goes back to a few episodes ago, we talked about how you network and how when people come in and talk with you, you have other people that are in your network that you can kind of, you know, gear them to or guide them to, to get help. So mm -hmm. this is just another yeah. example of uh, mm -hmm. you being able to help people. Even you said, you know, I have the info up on the screen about your free consultation. Yeah. Please give mm -hmm. Stacy a call at 626-461-3344. Email her at info at trueuministries.com. But you've talked mm -hmm. about doing consultations before with, with clients where you said, you know, you just had said, you know, I'm going to give you somebody else or I'm going to, I have somebody else in mind that I think you'll work with. So, you know, this is yeah. just a great opportunity. Like I always say to our listeners, check out your website, check out uh, <laughs> trueuministries.com. It's a great, has a lot of resources and Holly being on the show today is just an example of another one of those resources. Um, yeah. So Holly, uh, thank you for coming on to the show show. Uh, and I gave a little bit of, of your background, but could you tell us how you got into a uh, faith-based nutritionist? How does that come along? That's a, I, lo I love it. Faith-based certified holistic nutritionist. That's a lot in, in one title. <laughs> how did you start your journey? <laughs> yeah, it is a lot. And I, I think it's there's similarities with Stacey where you just work through so many things and eventually you realize it's got to be a whole person. You've got to bring faith into it. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, to go back kind of a little bit far and give you kind of the full background and sort of re to relate, I think, with some listeners, I think like a lot of women in particular from like high school on, my weight was kind of always somewhere in the back of my mind, if not at the forefront, right? Like always worried about weight. Um, seeing perfect models on magazines and on TV and all those things. I always just felt like a little bit too big, not quite skinny enough, a little bit insecure, um, always kind of trying to achieve the perfect body. Um, and I knew that God and my family thought that I was beautiful and perfect and everything. Right. But that social messaging was a lot stronger for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think a lot of people carry the same like pain in a sense of just not looking or feeling quite the way they want to or that society says they're supposed to look. Um, mm -hmm. And then during college, I gained like around 30 pounds, a little over. Um, and kind of when I hit that like slightly over 30 pound mark, that was sort of this wake up call to me that I needed to eat healthier. Um, I needed to be disciplined and working out. I kind of started working out like at the end of high school, but this was like, okay, I really got to learn more and get serious about this. So I did end up losing quite a bit of weight through just like portion control and exercising. And then I got a trainer, a personal trainer. And this was where I started to learn about really how huge diet um, is to our physical appearance and just our well-being, like our mental health and our physical health. Um, and I, I, it was a very powerful experience for me. So I ended up becoming a personal trainer and I just fell in love with working out and nutrition and how you could kind of manipulate those things to change your body and to feel better and to gain energy and all these things. Um, and up until that point, I don't think I had really understood that I had that much power um, to shape my body through food and exercise. And then several years later, things really shifted for me. Um, there's this popular bodybuilder um, named Dana Lynn Bailey that I used to watch a lot of her YouTube videos. And this inspired me like for the first time to focus on getting strong instead of just being skinny. Um, I think so many of us are just constantly focused on losing weight and getting skinny. And my perspective kind of shifted to like, oh, she's so strong. She was still feminine. She was still pretty and all these wonderful things, but she was so strong. And it kind of motivated me in a new way where I started to get more concerned with that instead of just trying to burn calories all the time. Um, and this was kind of like around the point where even though I'd lost weight, this is where I started to like see muscles appear in places I'd never seen or felt. And I started to get comments about how fit I looked. Um, and this whole process was like, it, it was just different to me. Like it required a different drive and commitment. And it was sort of this exciting challenge to me. And I think up until that point, maybe without fully 
fully understanding it. I think, I think it was in the back of my mind. There's sort of this like darkness and heaviness, I feel like around just burn calories, lose weight, get skinny. Um, and this sort of like, you're just not good enough. You're not good enough. You know, work mm -hmm. harder, lose more weight kind of feeling. And as I started to get stronger instead, it changed to this feeling of empowerment and accomplishment and strength and confidence. And I started to feel strong and see that I was capable of doing all these things that I never would have really imagined. Um, and this all started to translate into my life outside of the gym. So this is where the faith component started to come in. Um, as I go to the gym, aspects of my spiritual life with God would just start to flood my brain. Like if I was mm -hmm. doing an exercise, it was really hard or really painful or cardio was just getting so long and, you know, the endurance was tough. Um, thing, you know, verses like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me would come into my mind. And not that that's necessarily the context of that verse, but things like that started mm -hmm. to come to life to me in a new way. And they motivated me. So I would kind of use like my spiritual life to push me in the gym and then vice versa. Um, so I would kind of apply the fact that I had the power of the Holy Spirit living in me to push me in the gym. And then I, as I'm learning this, like, oh, I can, I can push through, I can endure. I would then apply that same, you know, I did this, I finished it, I accomplished it. I pushed through all those types of feelings to the rest of my life. So into work or into ministry, into relationships. Um, and I remember this one time where I was going through kind of a tough relationship thing and also a ministry thing. Um, I was in a ministry that was just very like emotionally draining. Um, and I was tired, just kind of wanted to fall apart. And as I, I was at the gym working out that really, that idea of like, if I can push myself here, I can keep pushing in these other situations. I can keep trying. I can keep enduring. Um, I can keep relying on God for these things, right? Like I'm tougher than I think because God is my source of strength. And so as I push myself in the gym, I would apply these to all these other areas of life. And I just felt like this strength and confidence started to rise up. Um, and I was able to just kind of push through and sort of, instead of just like crumbling. Right. So even like mental health mm -hmm. started to get mm -hmm. a boost from all of this. And this sort of became mm -hmm. then the foundation of my business now. Right. So all the things that you mentioned, which is renewal fitness and nutrition coaching, um, because I realized that our physical and our spiritual being are so closely intertwined and that yes. they affect mm -hmm. each other. Just like, Stacey mentioned, it's like if one area is out of balance, they're all out of balance. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was like after that, it seemed like practically every week when I would go to the gym, something from my spiritual life, from scripture, whatever would um, like come to life in the gym. And I would see these metaphors from the gym that apply to the rest of life. Um, so the gym and healthy eating, all these things became these really significant teachers to me. And so ever since I wanted to share that same message with other people, that it's not just about working hard, losing weight, building muscle, all that, that it's so much deeper than that. Um, and so many of us are dealing with, you know, feelings of inadequacy or weakness or not good enough, low self-esteem, not liking how we look, feeling overlooked, all these types of things. Um, mm -hmm. But when we combine our relationship with God, who so deeply loves us and accepts us and empowers us with renewing our physical strength and energy, mm -hmm. it has such this transforming ability um, and so that's a little bit of a long-winded answer, I think, but that's sort of a summary of how connecting my physical body and health with my spiritual body really transformed me. I felt like from sort of this, you know, sort of body conscious, I'm not good enough type of girl, a little bit insecure to feeling much more capable and empowered and strong in the Holy Spirit. Oh, what an amazing journey you went through there. For those just mm -hmm. tuning in to True You Ministries, uh, we have Stacey Echeverria, a pastoral counselor, joined along with our guest, Holly Soto. Holly is a faith-based certified holistic nutritionist, personal trainer, and group fitness instructor. And today's topic is keys to good physical and emotional health. Stacey, I had a, it's, before we get back to Holly, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you think nowadays with social media and all the onslaught that we get of images, is body image more of an issue now today than it was in the past? Short answer, yes. <laughs> it absolutely is. Uh, we see all this messaging on, on, on social media, particularly, and even still coming out of Hollywood, that, that women are not allowed 
to be who they are right where they're at. There's not an acceptance really of, of where we're at, especially as we get older, as, as women get older, we're not allowed to really age gracefully, whereas the men are. And I think that's a really, really dangerous message. Uh, we end up going through plastic surgeries and, you know, doing all kinds of things to change how we look so that we have value. Mm -hmm. And where we're placing our value is on the external rather than on the internal, which never changes, right? Mm -hmm. And also, where are we getting our identity from? It is from the Lord. If we're looking at worth and value and identity uh, in the external, that always changes. And so we'll never be able to keep up. But what I did like, and that's a really great question, what I did like about um, Holly's story was what I was hearing is that um, diet, exercise, our spiritual life, you know, it isn't a check off all these boxes and you'll be good to go, mm -hmm. but it is about a lifestyle. And so we're always working on how can we, uh, make our bodies last as long as we can and be healthy. So there's a difference between being healthy and skinny because not all skinny people are healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm sure Holly can attest to that <laughs> uh, in her own experiences, right? But not all skinny people are healthy, but it really is about loving who you are right where you're at and knowing that it's a journey and it is a process. And that, you know, yes, you know, for especially for me being uh, someone that is older who has gone through menopause, the weight has come on because there's hormonal differences. But how can I love who I am right where I'm at, knowing that I'm in the process of dealing with that? But when we get those messages, especially with young girls, particularly, that they have to be a certain size, that they have, you know, I mean, my goodness, it used to be a size six. Now it's a size zero. I, I, that, I, I mean, and we also have to look at our body types and our structure and our frame. You know, some, some people are just a little bit larger in their frame. Will there, will they ever be a size two? No. And when we look at those skinny runway models, well, you know, not everyone is born looking like that, mm -hmm. you know, so we just have to be accepting of where we're at and really being anchored and firmly rooted in knowing who we are in Christ. Right. And then, and then we can find the answers with, well, how do I shed these extra 20 pounds that I, that I put on or the freshman 15, right. In college, um, you know, yeah, things happen, but how can you learn from that, you know, in the process? But the social media, I, I mean, to me, uh, for me personally, I'm not on social media because I need to protect my emotional health. And yes. it wasn't, you know, and so as, as an older person who's not native to that, I, I was like, I can see the good aspects of it, but, but I can also see the downside of it as well. Yeah. And with the, the way that images are edited nowadays and photoshopped, it's not even a real body that these girls are looking or, or, or boys as well, or men and women that are exactly. looking at these images. These are unrealistic images that aren't even natural. It's, yeah. you know, the computers right. generated it or whatnot. Um, back right. to Holly, this is yeah. a long question and it's kind of a basic one, but it's an important one. Why does our physical health matter? <laughs> yeah, it is a big question. Um, it, I mean, our physical health is almost everything. I mean, I don't want to say it's everything. Spiritual is more important, but if we don't have our physical health, it affects everything else. Um, our mental health tends to take a downturn. Our emotions are more difficult. Relationships become difficult. We can't serve other people as well. We can't love other people as well because we're totally self-focused. Um, I know for me, like when I was focused on losing weight, it was a distraction from other things. It was self-focused, um, even created there was sort of, I think, a lack of just confidence in general and lack of willingness to just step out and do other things or even serve other people. Um, but if you're struggling, you know, like Stacy with chronic fatigue or like currently I have some gut health issues, like it, it just takes your attention away from other things and it can become very... Um, heavy emotionally, like Stacey mentioned earlier, it's like you start wondering, like, God, are you hearing me? Are you going to answer my prayers? Like it <laughs> starts to seep into everything and kind of affect your whole life. So um, and then, of course, just for general well-being and for length of life and all these things, quality of life. Um, 
<clears throat> so it, it really affects everything. And if you're not eating like a, a God designed diet, right? Like whole foods that God created instead of man-made foods, um, then you're going to struggle with even more health issues. Um, and yeah, I would say like in my own kind of like gut health, digestive issues struggle, um, it's been very mentally draining, um, mm -hmm. emotionally draining. Like there's times where it's just so frustrating. Um, it can leave you in tears, you know, health issues are hard for people, whether it's back pain or knee pain, or, you know, it could be anything, a sickness, a disease. It's very, it's a, it's a really big struggle and it just pulls you away from the rest of life really. Yeah. My next question is for both of you and I'll Stacy, I'll have you answer first. Why do you think it is? And, and, and people do it in a lot of issues in their life. There's something that they need to address, mm -hmm. but they don't here. We're talking about uh, physical health. Why do people put it on the back burner? What, it, what is it that makes them, you know, put it in the back burner and they don't think about it daily? There's so many different things that could be going on. Uh, there could be fear. There could be fear in finding out that maybe something is really wrong here. And so if we avoid it, we think it's going to go away when in fact it actually does get worse. So there, there could be that. Maybe, maybe for some people, physical health isn't a priority. It, it may not be. It, it does require a lot of time. It requires a lot of effort. It requires planning. I know for me, every week with the grocery shopping, I plan out our meals. I have a wonderful recipe app that I look at that helps me plan out my meals. And then I know what I'm going to be shopping for. And so that's what we eat. I don't buy anything that we're not going to eat, right? And so it does take discipline. Uh, that's the other thing. It takes a lot of discipline, you know, in wanting to find the answers and figure it out. We are also living in a culture where it's about convenience. Mm -hmm. How quickly can I get this? How quickly can I find, you know? So so let's let's say there's someone that uh, it is struggling with weight gain and maybe they've become morbidly obese, let's say. So this is an extreme case, right? So that has happened over a period of years. The problem that we're dealing with and what I see in my practice as well is that people are wanting a quick fix. Mm. So if you've put on a hundred pounds, say over a year, two years, three years, you cannot have the unrealistic expectation that you're going to lose a hundred pounds in three months. Now I'm exaggerating here, but you get the point. And so it's the same thing also within my practice where someone's been struggling with wh whether it's a relationship issue or whatever it happens to be, and they think they can have a quick fix or a quick answer in about eight weeks time when that's been going on for a very long time. So th those are some of the things that may be going on. Another, another thing that is really, really key, especially when someone is dealing with health issues and even emotional and mental health issues is this do they have support? Do they have support of a loved one? You know, if they're married, is there support of a spouse? You, what my husband's been really great where he says, I'll eat whatever you eat. You don't have to make anything different for me. And I said, right, but right now I'm going through a detox. You're not going to be eating what I'm eating, but I'll add, you know, some things to what I am eating so that, you know, cause you're not going through this. Uh, so I really, really appreciate that. But some people don't have that support. And so it makes it that much harder. And then they give up. Mm -hmm. And they, and then they're right back from where they're, where they where they started or worse because they're in it alone. So whether it's your emotional health, your physical well being, it's always a really great idea to have some sort of community support where mm -hmm. it's just one person who can do it with you or they can encourage you along the way. So those are some of the things that I see that could be setbacks and obstacles for people. One thing I deal with, with, with my health and physical fitness is I have something that I've uh, termed manianaism. Everything's manana. 
tomorrow. tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. I'll start my diet tomorrow. Right. I'll start the gym tomorrow. Right. A lot of manianaism, right. but I like like you said, it's discipline. You know, if, if you mm-hmm. can be disciplined in your faith and you do your Bible studies, yeah. you go to church. Well, you got to be disciplined in all aspects of your life. Yeah. And and how? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I want. I wanted to. I like that. But the and and so that's why I am not a big believer in New Year's resolutions mm. because within the first month or two okay, this is the year I'm going to get fit, right? And everyone's so gung-ho and they have all those gym memberships going. And by the third month, they're not there anymore. So it's really committing to yourself, Mm -hmm. right? Making that commitment to yourself, right? Resolutions don't work if you don't work them. So I'm not a big fan of them. It's just, you know, how much do you care about your own well-being that you're going to care for yourself in this way? This is a form of self-care if you really think about it. What do I, what am I feeding myself? What I feed myself for my physical body affects my brain. And it really, really does. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it's just such an important thing that you got to, you know, you can't do manianaism. You can't put it on the back burner because eventually uh, you'll pay the consequences. So, Holly, um, kind of uh, to add on to that question, how do you get people to be disciplined? How do you get your clients to do it? And also when they run into a speed bump, how do you get them from quitting? How do you keep them? How do you keep them moving forward? That's a good question. I think those two things are some of the biggest challenges with people Mm -hmm. reaching their health goals, whatever it is. Um, I think kind of with the manana, manana ism, (laughs) um, I think a lot of people have that. And I like that you brought that up and sort of the new year's resolution idea. I think that's one of those things that sometimes prevents people from moving forward is Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think if I'm going to start trying to lose weight or eat healthier or, you know, whatever it is, whatever their goal is that it's like, okay, I have to overhaul everything, right? I have to change everything I eat. I have to start doing exercise, whatever, 30 minutes a day. I have to like, everything in my life is going to have to change. It's going to be hard. So I think people feel like they need to like mentally rev up and get there and get committed. Um, and that's, that's hard. Like if you feel like you have to do this whole life overhaul at once. And for some people that totally works like those 30 day challenges, 60 day challenges, whatever. Some people Mm -hmm. love that. But I think for most people, like I encourage my clients just like little tiny steps at a time, right? Like I don't Mm -hmm. need you to follow a brand new meal plan and start going to the gym six days a week right off the bat. Like Mm -hmm. let's start with water. Can you drink more water this week? Like that's your first goal and maybe add a multivitamin in there or something. And then maybe next week, you start walking three days a week for 20 minutes. And then maybe you add in a day of strength training. And then, you know, maybe like each week it's like, okay, maybe you just start doing salads for lunch or you just stop going out for lunch, just make your lunch at home. And sort of these, like, just do little tiny bits that you can start today. You don't have to wait till Monday. You don't have to wait till the new year. Like what's just something easy you can start with. that feels doable. Like, I think that's really important Mm -hmm. for people is what's manageable, what's easy, what feels achievable. Let's start there. And then you can add on as you go. Uh, It's a slower process that way, but it's more likely that you're going to stick with it for the long term. Well, and I like that, you you know, to start with, you want to have reasonable attainable goals because it kind of makes sense if you start off and your first or two goals, you can't meet, that's going to be kind of discouraging. So I, I like the idea of setting some reasonable, attainable goals to start your health journey. So, yeah. And I think part of, part of it too, is like, kind of like Stacey said, realistic goals is not, you're going to lose 30 pounds in two months. Like it's just not going to happen. And I think a lot of people set themselves up for failure by thinking they're going to reach a goal really fast. And when they don't, then they give up. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I have to work through with my clients is like, mm-hmm. you know, if you lose half a pound a week, you're doing awesome. If you don't, that's okay too. It'll come off eventually if you stick with the process, but don't expect to lose five pounds this week when you start a brand new, you know, program or whatever you're doing, it's going to be a long process and that's okay. That's how it should be. It's safe. That works. It's going to be easier for the long term so don't like expect the you know don't set unrealistic goals Mm -hmm. um keep it really simple expect just small changes you're going to feel better first before you see your weight change or before all of your fatigue goes away or you know whatever Mm -hmm. your issue is like 
it, mm -hmm. it takes time and that's, that's the normal. Again, it kind of goes back to like social media, magazines, mm -hmm. TV, like you just don't normally drop tons of weight or heal mm -hmm. your issue you've been dealing with for years and years in one week with some special diet. You know, it just, it's not realistic. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Yeah. And if you see yeah, those ads I, out there, too good to be true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. You can't lose this, magically lose this weight that's taking you maybe your whole lifetime to gain. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. What I loved hearing uh, in Holly's uh, piece here is that um, it really is about realistic, achievable, consistent goals, right? So having that consistency, but having realistic goals too and expectations as well. Um, so I, I like the way that she approaches, you know, her clients in that way as well. Yes. And for people who are just tuning in right now, this is True You Ministries. We're with Stacey Echeverea, a pastoral counselor, and her guest today is Holly Soto. She's a faith-based certified holistic nutritionist, personal trainer, and group fitness instructor. And today's topic is keys to good physical and emotional health. Now, I, I kind of talked about it a little bit on that last question about hitting speed bumps. I'm curious, Holly, what do you do when one of your clients is ready to give up? They've, they've, you know, they've started their health journey and something's happened in their life and they're just overstressed or something and they just want to quit. What, how, what is there? And I know this is faith based and you help your clients with that. Is there some scriptures that you help or, you know, add in or is there some, what, what do you do to keep them motivated? Yeah, that's a good question. And it does happen <laughs> um, fairly often. Um, yeah, if we can bring God into equ the equation, I think that always helps. Um, for some people, it's sometimes I almost need to partner with someone like Stacy, like with a therapist and sort of like, okay, there's like a deeper issue here mm -hmm. usually. Like, how can we bring God into that? Like, can you start journaling? Can you start praying over this more? Like, if you're struggling with food, can you pray before every meal and ask God to help you with whatever it is you're struggling with? Or can you bring this to God daily to pray through it and ask him to help you and ask him to be your strength? Um, I, I think scriptures all kind of depends on the person. I don't have like one go-to scripture necessarily, but definitely ones about God being your strength, about having the whole power of the Holy Spirit in us, the power of self-control, um, love, not fear, those types of things. I think those are always helpful. Um, remembering mm -hmm. that God is with us, that he's for us, that he's a healer. Um, and then I think from there, it, it kind of depends on the person. You know, some people do just need to take a step back and kind of go back to what I said before. Like, okay, well, let's just go back to, um, you know, can you just add in, just, just have a vegetable every day. That's let's like, let's just let's do that for the next few weeks. And don't worry about the stress of I got to fit in workouts and I got to cook all these meals and all those things. Like maybe we just take it back a notch and simplify things, but keep you moving forward. That's always mm -hmm. a big one for me is like, don't quit. You've already made progress. Don't stop. Like if you need to dial it back a little bit, that's mm -hmm. fine. But try to keep at least improving your health a little bit, even if it's just tiny little things. Um, and some people may need a challenge. Like they, sometimes I'll do like, all right, look, if you hit this goal, I'll give you a free session or whatever, you know? Um, or like <laughs> Stacey said, you might need community. You might need, um, yeah. you know, a trainer, a nutritionist, you might need a group. Some people do better with groups who work out together, go on mm -hmm. walks together, that type of thing. So mm -hmm. I think every mm -hmm. person has to kind of figure out what works for them. So that's what mm -hmm. I try to do is like, what's going to motivate this person, which might be totally different from a different person and let's work on whatever is appealing to them, whatever is achievable, whatever is motivating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stacy, do you have any scriptures you can share with us? I know you always have them that you work in on the show. Do you have some that deal with, that could uh, tie in with good physical and emotional health? Well, yeah, I, I really like this one. And I wanted to, um, before I even get into that, one of the things that I, because I, I run, I run into the same thing in my practice too with folks that are wanting counseling and sometimes they're ready to, to give up because maybe they're not experiencing a breakthrough or seeing as much progress. And so I ask them to remember why, why did they reach out for counseling? What is their why for doing it? 
if the why isn't strong enough, it's not going to keep them motivated to continue. So that's one of the things that I work on with my clients. What's the why? So really, what is the pain point? right? Mm -hmm. If they're not remembering that, if that pain point isn't painful enough for them to make a change, they're not going to. Uh, but a scripture that I really like is in Hebrews 12, one through two. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. So it's a race. And I look at it as not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's, you know, this, this marathon of life is, is not short little sprints, but it's a, a, a an opportunity for us to develop perseverance and endurance. And, mm -hmm. and along the way, yeah, are we going to have obstacles? You bet. But it doesn't mean we just stop running the race. We'll, we'll need to figure out how to pivot, how to adjust and what needs, what needs to be fixed in terms of our, the plan that we have with regard to our physical health also with our emotional health. Okay, well, what part of the plan and the things that we have set out to do, what's not currently working and what do we need to adjust along the way? Yeah. And, you know, so, uh, Holly touched on it and you just touched on it too. There's a direct correlation with physical health and emotional health. Um, you know, when you start your day off and you're feeling good, you know, gut health and everything and you've got the energy, your day is so much different than if you start off not feeling good in pain. Um, and if you're not in good physical condition, that's how a lot of people start their day is feeling uncomfortable. Um, whether it be back pain or gut, you know, issues. So you can't really take on the day with full force. If you start your day off feeling crummy, um, right. and, and some people that are dealing with chronic issues that, you know, just physical health, if they took care of their physical health, I know every time I've lost a considerable amount of weight, my back pain goes away. Mm -hmm. um, and I also sleep better because I feel mm -hmm. like I have less weight on my throat or my neck. I, I feel like I can breathe better. So <laughs> it kind of it, it, it ties into the into the wholeness of it all. And so I'm curious, Stacy, with your clients, do you see that when they come in to work with you, when they're, when they're, you know, a difference from somebody who's physically healthy to somebody who's, you know, unhealthy, do you just, you, can you see it right away in their um, attitude and how they feel towards working in as on their emotional health? Oh, absolutely. Because if their physical health is an issue and they feel stuck, they're going to be stuck in actually making progress in their emotional health. But I also think too, it really is a mindset issue as well. And so what do, and so it goes back to what are we believing to be true, right? Yeah. And so if we believe that I'm always going to be this way, so I have to, I have to address that. I have to address, well, what are they believing? If what they're believing is false, they're not going to get anywhere. In fact, they're going to get, they're going to continue staying stuck and things may end up getting worse. But when I start working with them in chain in helping them change what they are believing and really going to scripture for truth, which is where I want everyone to be anchored in because that doesn't ever change. Then that hope comes that, okay, I'm feeling better in my emotional health and they may be more empowered and energized to now tackle the physical issues that they're dealing with. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a fitness coach, which is why someone like Holly would be a great person that I would refer them to, you know, because I that's just not my area of expertise. It's not an area that I'm called to. But, uh, but for me personally, I have seen in my own life that when I'm taking care of my emotional health, I'm much more inclined to tackle the chronic fatigue issues that I've been dealing with. And I, and I do have a, a, a good uh, update on that story that I'll share a little bit later uh, where, you know, it's like, okay, 
I feel like, okay, I've taken this on, I'm doing well over here, then I can now start focusing my energies on this next piece. I can't do both of them at the same time because it is draining for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I urge our listeners to call Stacy at 626-461-3344 or email at info at trueuministries.com. Get your 20 minute free consultation. And this is hard to go at it alone. If, if you, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a spouse, like Stacy said, your husband's on board with your, you know, dietary restrictions, or if you go on a diet, he's along with you. And it, but if you don't have that, it's, I know it's very hard to do it alone. So that's why you've got great resources like Stacy and Holly out there to help you with your emotional and physical health. Um, it's teamwork kind of getting to, you know, and it, I think also, even if you do have a spouse or significant other, that you uh, maybe you don't feel comfortable discussing that with them. Um, and it's something that you would rather just, you know, discuss with a professional and, you know, bring them in later on um, if, if needed or whatnot. But uh, I, I think it's a great resource for our listeners right now. Uh, check out trueministries.com. There's videos on there, um, links, resources. I'm going to put up mm -hmm. Holly's website here. She's got resources on her website as well. And mm -hmm. um, as we go into it, can we talk a little bit about um, what are some of the first steps to getting started in overall health? And we'll start with you, Stacy. Talk to Holly. <laughs> <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> well, you know, and, and it really is, you know, talk to a professional who can, who you, who you can share what your struggles are and have them devise a plan for you where actually it's a partnership, right? They're not telling you, these are all the things that you need to do. I'm working with a doctor right now who's like, if there's anything on the list that you don't want to eat, you don't have to eat it. So she, the, she has input from me. So I get to drive my plan. And I really think it is a partnership when it's, when it has to do with overall health, it is a partnership with the person that is struggling, who is needing help and the professional that they're, that they've decided to work with. So that's my input on that. <laughs> well, I think of, you know, having, you know, the celebrities have an entourage. Well, everybody mm -hmm. should have their own entourage of health mm -hmm. experts and people that are helping <laughs> yep. them. And, you know, even if they're not behind them physically, you know, you can picture, hey, I've got these people, they've got my back, you know, they're helping me with my, you know, mental health, my emotional mm -hmm. health, my physical health. Um, so, um, Holly, I know Stacy. she uses um, video conferencing with her clients and she's used, you know, the technology that's available to, the, to us today. Do you help your clients uh, that way as well, or do they? Ha can you do you only visit them in person? Uh, no, actually, most of my clients I do virtually as well. So I'm usually on Zoom with clients or phone. Um, it's actually rare nowadays. I think ever since the whole pandemic, it, pretty yeah. much everything is online. So I work with people. You know, they could be anywhere in the world, really. Um, and yeah, I just do mostly uh, video conferencing. Well, that makes it easy. You know, everybody, everything's on demand nowadays and at your fingertips. So instead of having to get <laughs> yeah. your car and drive somewhere, boom, you know, Holly can be right on your phone or your desktop and that makes it mm -hmm. really easy. And yeah. how often do you work with, uh, how, how often do you work with counselors like Stacy and other people uh, like with, the, with your client? Do you, is you tend to have, do they tend to have a team of people helping or how does that normally work? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, if it were, all up to me. If I could make my clients do anything I wanted them to, and they had endless money, I would probably have all of them with someone like Stacy with a counselor. I have, I usually at least try to refer them to someone. They might not want it. Uh, they might already have a therapist or someone working with them. Um, but I do, I think it's the most helpful, at least if someone is struggling with a lot of health issues or it's very complex, if they've got their doctor and their therapist and their nutritionist, you know, their trainer, whatever, if they've got that team of people, it's definitely far more effective. Um, and I think, you know, everyone is kind of giving the same messages sometimes, but in slightly different ways. So I think it helps people to hear that. And like you said, when there's sort of that team of people around you, um, it's just like, you know, the Christian walk, we're supposed to do it together. We're yes. not supposed mm -hmm. to do it alone. Um, we have, you know, the team of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We have the team of our churches and our families. And it's, I think it's the same way with health. It's if you've got people around you to support you, you're going to be much more um, successful. 
Yes, for sure. The Lord definitely puts our, you know, our Christian brothers and sisters in our life for a certain reason. And you need to build that, you know, group of people that can positively influence you. So Mm -hmm. I, I know when it comes to health myself, I always do good when I've got a buddy to challenge me and we kind of challenge each other and go, let's see how long we can go. How long can we go without working out? You know, let's, how long can (laughs) we go on juice cleanses? Uh, I did that with one of my friends and I thought it was funny. He kept calling me and texting me all day. Are you still doing the juice cleanse? And we did a three day juice cleanse. Are you still doing it? it? Yes, I'm doing it. Yeah, everything. Well, it turned out he wasn't. So that's why he kept texting because he is feel, feeling guilty, but I, I made it through the, through the three days. So I know it's, it's good to have a team, uh, you know, not only professionals, but also your peers and your loved ones to help you along this journey. And it could be a long journey. Like you said, it's not going to be a quick fix easy. If it's taken you three, five, 10 years to gain the weight, you're not going to lose the weight in one year or, or less. And, he, and if you do, most likely it's not going to stay off. Um, that's kind of some of the issues I've had. I, you know, I lose weight and gain weight. And that's the frustrating thing. It's so easy to lose weight. I mean, it's so hard to lose weight, but so easy to gain it right back. But mm-hmm. I think when people go through the process and they kind of reach their healthy goal and sometimes fall back, I think once you've done it, you realize it's not as hard and overwhelming as you, if someone who's never done it. Because it is kind of this overwhelming feeling of, oh, I, I don't know if I can do it. I, 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 is this effort going to go to waste? Is this effort going to go to nothing? But if you've done it in the past, you can do it again. You can do all things through Christ. So you got to stay motivated. Um, Stacy, earlier you said you were going to touch on uh, your chronic f- fatigue. You were going to give a little... Uh, a little update. update. So, yes. so uh, through Holly... Uh, she had referred a naturopathic doctor to me and I like going the holistic way of health as well. And this doctor wanted me to go get some labs, which I did. And she ordered 30 tests to be done, Wow! which traditional medicine doesn't do that. And in that, we figured out what the issue was, and that is Epstein-Barr virus. Oh. And so that is what's causing the chronic fatigue. And so now there's a plan in place to deal with that. And we have an answer. And I have to tell you, I, I was emotional about that because I knew it was real. I knew what I was experiencing. And I finally found someone that heard me, that listened, that cared enough to run all the all the tests that needed to be run in order for us to have an answer and then a plan of action. So that's where I'm at. I'm new. I'm early in the journey right now. She's having me go through a three-week detox. And so I'm in week three right now. And so far, so good because I eat clean anyway. So I'm not experiencing any of those withdrawal symptoms, you know, that most people do with detoxes. Uh, But, you know, in, in talking with Holly, Uh, in letting her know, you know, this is what, this is, you know, what I'm, that, what I'm needing or, or whatever. And she gave me that referral. And I said, I have nothing to lose to, to set up a consultation with this doctor, to have the evaluation, which she, the doctor wanted my husband to be, be, to be part of that one hour and 15 minute evaluation because he needed to hear from her what was really going on so that he could understand it. It wasn't me just going, I'm tired and not knowing why it's like, okay, my my doctor understood exactly why, you know, hadn't done the labs yet, but she knew what was going on. And so for him to be able to hear from her was really, really helpful. Yeah. Knowledge is power. And so many times on things like this, the fear of the unknown is what holds people back. So kind of, I think, you know, both of you probably experienced that where you kind of, when you inform your clients, let them know what's going on, give them kind of a path or kind of a goals to set, then they're a little bit you know more at ease and ready to, you know, take on the journey. Because if you don't know what's going on, we fill our heads with all these things that may not be true and make assumptions. But, uh, you know, once you get the knowledge, once you get some professional help, people can kind of guide you towards your goals. So... Mm -hmm. And uh, so I know that, you know, we talked so much about the mental and, and emotional health connected with the physical health. Uh, I want you guys both to talk about how important that is 
And I'll start with you, Stacy. Well, it's everything, isn't it? It really, really is. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, when we when we look at actually when we look at the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they're they're three, but they're one. They're connected, and each one has a different function, right? And so when we look at ourselves, you know, body, mind, spirit, you know, um, each part of us has a particular function, and yet it's one. Uh, so when we're not feeding one part of it, when we're not taking care of one part of it, it absolutely impacts the other two. And yes. so anyway, yeah. So I'd love to hear from Holly what she thinks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would agree. They, they're they all so important. Um, they're all very closely connected. Um, and I'm sort of losing my train of thought here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... Um, I think that's what I was going to say. One thing that I think a lot of people, maybe some people know, but I think sometimes people don't realize the extent to which um, the like physical exercise and the nutrition that we're putting into our bodies so much affects our mental and emotional health. There is a gut brain connection, like a lot of mm -hmm. stress and anxiety and those types of emotions can at least partially be caused by what's happening in your gut the microbiome mm -hmm. um, that can lead to mental stress and disorders. So food, the foods that we eat affect that. So there are foods that help combat stress. There's foods that contribute to stress. Um, there's foods mm -hmm. that help give us energy. There's foods that sap us of energy. Um, exercising can, you know, release chemicals like endorphins that make us feel great. Um, they give us energy that relieve stress. Like there's so much that you can do with your food and your exercise that affects all of the other areas of your life. But I think a lot of people just don't put two and two together sometimes or don't realize how much one area is impacting the other and vice versa. I think if you're really emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, a lot of times then you kind of tend to make better food choices and you tend to take care of yourself a little bit better when you, mm -hmm. you know, you feel like you are this temple of God, the Holy Spirit is living in you. And if you're not emotionally eating and going to foods to make you feel better, then you're also going to be choosing better foods most of the time. So very closely intertwined and, you know, kind of chicken and egg, you know, it's hard to tell yeah. sometimes which is affecting the other, but um, I think either way, taking care of one area is going to improve the other one. Well, this has been a great show. I'm motivated. I'm going to hit the elliptical later. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm motivated. <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> Before we finish, Stacey, we got a couple more minutes. Mm -hmm. Can you leave us, uh, listeners, with uh, any last words or a scripture that you could share with us? <sighs> Holly, I which which one is the one that is on your website? Do you remember? Um, I think probably you're referring to the scripture that's Isaiah 40, 31, that says, but those yeah. who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I love it. That's a great, yeah. great scripture and great mm -hmm. way to end the show. I thank mm -hmm. you both, Stacy and Holly. This is going to be a great resource for our listeners. I hope all of our listeners out there are motivated to take the first step to everlasting change. Thank you for listening to True You Ministries. We'll be back next week at the same time. Thank you, ladies.